my girlfriend, and we're going to talk about cold capping, which I know so many people do not know about. So I'm thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to bring you here. Um, how we always like to start the Hangouts is could you first tell us about who you are before you started doing this? What? Why did you get involved in this? So I'm going to let you take it over, and you're going to introduce yourself and tell the world who you are. Okay. Hello, world. Uh, I'm Claudia Falzerano, and I have an I love LLC. that if you're Italian, too, with that <laughs> last name. Well, my husband's Italian, but that's, that's okay. I'm <laughs> taking it. Yeah, I'll take it, too. <laughs> um, I have an LLC called Right Arm, and what we do is really just try to support women through mostly penguin cold caps. Uh, the way I got started with this is I had a very dear friend five years ago who uh, was diagnosed, and she said she was going to meet with oncologists to try to figure out what to do. I offered to go with her and take notes because I know yeah. you, can, you can't digest everything. And, uh, I brought a girlfriend with me too, and we still crack up. She's like, we left the doctor's appointment once, and I was like, oh, the doctor said blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and my husband was like, oh, yeah, no, the doctor said this. And MC looked at us, and she was like, the doctor didn't say any of that. You need that person there. You definitely, definitely do. Yeah, it's really like a patient advocate or whatever the title is. And I said, you're not going alone. And so I took notes, and the very first appointment, uh, when the oncologist said that she needed chemo, which she, she knew, she said, you're going to lose your hair. And my friend just burst out crying. I felt so bad for her. And she said, you know, I'm in a male dominated industry. I get very little respect as it is. I can't go in with a scarf on my head or a wig. I just can't, you know, is there anything I can do? The oncologist, like so many of them just didn't know about cold caps. And she said, no. So, we did our rounds. I came home and I told my husband, I said, you know, she was so upset. She's going to lose her hair. And he said, wait a minute. Wait, what about Marjorie? And he, through him, I, I knew this wonderful woman named Marjorie Thompson. And she had done cold caps many years ago. She was a dean of science at Brown University. She really looked into the science of it. She did great. And she mentored me through the whole thing. And it just grew from there. You know, one person sees it. And then somebody else would say, can you do that for me? And it's just grown since then. And my friend Alicia used cold caps and it, it was phenomenal for her. She, she did not lose her hair. Um, and it, for her, it wasn't for her to, she wasn't upset about losing her hair. It was her kids. Her right. son was really scared about her, the mom losing the hair. So for, for Alicia, it wasn't about vanity or anything of that nature. It was about making her child feel comfortable. Right. And I hear that time and again. Many women, you know, unfortunately, they're getting younger and younger, it seems like, with this Doctor. crazy, I know, uh, rampant disease. Uh, and so many of them have young kids and they don't want them to think, you know, mommy's really, really sick. Because as we know, some in, in many, many cases, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And mm -hmm. so they want to look the same. And then other people, like for my friend, they just want their privacy. They don't necessarily right want to be a poster child for breast cancer they don't want to walk down the street and everybody will go oh it's so sad you know oh, and the sad oh, eyes and the, oh you're gonna I be okay the big pity party i know that's what one woman said to me i don't want the pity party i just want to live my life normally and i don't want to look sick you know because even the best wig you know it comes off at night and then you go okay i really am sick and so it's a great thing so on Cure Diva, I have all sorts of people that will email me and say, oh, you have you have cold caps. I need one sent to me right away. And my first response to them is always and every single time, have you started chemotherapy? And so many times people are like, oh, yeah, but it's only my second treatment. And so maybe can you tell us just about the, the rules to cold capping? Because there are strict rules involving it. There are, there are many restrictions. And I always tell women that because I want them to be realistic. I don't want them to think they're gonna put a cold cap on their hair and they're gonna dye their hair and blow it dry and it's gonna look beautiful because that's not the case. So you're absolutely right, Emery. The very first thing is to ideally start with your first treatment. We have capped women who had one treatment and their hair does tend to fall out, but it grows back much faster with cold cap use. So they're aware of that, it's their choice and that's fine. So what I, I always tell people is go to penguincoldcaps.com. There are a few different scalp cooling therapies out there. I, my first hand experience has been that that's absolutely the best. And, uh, and they're a rental, right? They're a rental? Yes, they're rental, right. Uh, yeah. And their website is, is pretty good. It'll tell you yeah, what you work with, things like that, because it's, it's, some are harsher than others. 
Um, but generally speaking, the, the results have been phenomenal. And the restrictions are no hair drying, no hair coloring, uh, no tight ponytails. You kind of have to imagine that your hair is just barely attached to your head and just baby it. Right. Once a week with a very diluted special shampoo. And by wash, I don't mean, you know, scrub the scalp. It's more like a rinse. So it's just there are a lot of restrictions. And the last thing I want is for somebody to start and then go, whoa, I can't I can't live like this. You know, so right. I tell everybody about it. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. But, you know, I'm just up front and I want everybody to know that there are restrictions. I think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, I, I do. It actually, I have another girlfriend who did not use the cold caps, but she used the mittens and the gloves, and her right. neuropathy is like barely any. And she had crazy chemo, like eighteen rounds of like intense chemo, and her her neuropathy is really controlled. And the science behind it makes complete sense to me. But yeah. the other part to what I get on on our page is we we carry the elastigel ones, and right. people just want to buy one cap, and you can't buy one cap, right? One cap is not going to cover it. Not, not to my knowledge. I mean, maybe there's some chemo protocol out there that would work with that, but no, I know that seems like an ideal easy fix, but it really won't work because they have to be maintained at a certain temperature and that, that cap is going to get too warm. So it's, it's a process. Cold capping is a real process. You have to get it to the right temperature. You have to fit it properly. You have to time it properly. And there's post infusion hours. It could be four to five hours after the chemo has ended. Um, some hospitals don't necessarily want to allow for that time. You know, if, if you live nearby, which is great when you're not in New York city, but you know, a lot of people do just go home and finish capping, you know, and that's great if you can do that. I um, didn't realize that. I didn't know you had to keep it on afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Usually four hours is the minimum. So, uh, you know, it depends. I mean, New York city with all the people, they kind of want to get you in and out because you know, it's yeah. business and they're there to help people and all that. Um, but the facilities that have been supportive have just allowed it. Some move you out to the waiting room, you know, whatever it is, but we get it done. Um, and I, I've been, I put up Alicia's blog and your blog about it. And in the pictures, you can see that um, the, the people sitting in the chair are covered with blankets and they have this on and that on. And to tell, tell about that, like why all that? Yeah, there actually is some science behind that as well, which I think is explained on the Penguin website. Yeah. But um, you you do have to, first of all, you're freezing. These are generally speaking minus 32 to minus 34 Celsius, which is super, super cold. So uh, we suggest that women dress in layers and always have an electric blanket. And then you keep the body parts warm and the extremities mm. are cold. And that's, and again, we do with certain protocols, we do use the Elastigel boots and right. mitts. So they're a godsend because yeah, who wants neuropathy? Nobody needs that. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a whole process, but layers are good. Um, you know, of course, nothing, if you don't have a port, nothing too tight on the arm so that the IV can get in there. Right. And, and actually that's another nice part is these post infusion capping hours are, are, you're not tied up to the IV anymore once you're all flushed out. So you can move around, you can get up, you can walk around, you can go to another room and we just roll our cooler down the hallway or wherever they send us and, and finish up. And do you find the hospitals are receptive to this or are they a little apprehensive about it? You know, that's a great question. Uh, in New York, because they are supportive, it's it's been great. Um, although not every facility has a freezer, which I wish they would get because they're donated by the Rapunzel Project. Um, so it doesn't cost them anything, but you know, that's, that's maybe another topic. But I have capped in other states. I, I've had many clients in Vermont. I used to go up there. and. And other places where they really don't know anything about it, I've found that some of the nurses are a little apprehensive because they're thinking, you know, this is my industry and if I never heard of it, it can't work. And so, you know, I, I know I'm a guest in their house, so to speak, you know, yeah. so say, let's just, let's just see. My experience has been good. Let's see. And maybe I've met a lot of non-believers into believers. So week after week when they come back with hair, you know, it's, it speaks for itself. And, and the thing that, that always gets me, and this, this goes for cold capping and for taking turmeric or, you know, whatever right. wacky thing you're doing, if it might work, why not? Exactly. You know, and, you know, there's no, I don't believe B12 is going to cure cancer. And I don't believe that, you know, taking turmeric is going to really, maybe, maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe, I have no idea, but it's not a harmful thing because, right. right? You can't, I mean, you can't, it's not going to give you cancer more than you have it. So, right. Well, that is one of the concerns with many 
oncologists who are unfamiliar with scalp cooling therapy is they are afraid that because you're protecting the head that these cancer could metastasize to the scalp. And there are tons of studies about that because this has been around in Europe for 30 years or more and it's very revered and respected and they've done these studies and, and even some in the States. And what they found is that breast cancer doesn't generally travel that way, so that's first of all. And the women that do get scalp met, it's the same very low percentage of women using whole caps and not. So they would have gotten it anyway. So it's, right. you know, to me it's a non-starter. But um, I know some oncologists are concerned about that. But I, I think that it goes back to the Western and Eastern medicine thing. I think that this seems to be a little bit alternative, so they can't embrace it as much as they could, which is hilarious to me because we'll pump someone filled with we'll pump them, we'll, we'll pump pump <laughs> pump them filled with chemo, but when we just put a cold cap on them, we look at like it's crazy. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, you know, the few facilities that are holding out for freezers in New York and, and whether they'll do it permanently or maybe they have plans in the future. That's kind of the way they are. They're like, you can come in and do it, but we don't support it. So we don't want to know about it. We kind of turn away, you know, but they know that this is what women seem to want. And women are taking their business elsewhere. So they're like, you know what, if you're not going to let me do cold caps, I'll go down the street to this other place. and. Well, I'll I mean, I think we were just taught, I had support group earlier today and we were just talking about a little, what, what you said. And I think that we lose so much control with cancer, so mm -hmm. much. I mean, doctor's appointments, you know, our breasts, our nipples, I mean, I could, the list is extensive. Right. So if there's a few things that we can control, like maybe losing our hair or just the fact that we're trying it, maybe it doesn't work and we're just trying it. Let me do it. Like this exactly. is my decision. I want to. I I think it's empowering for the women to even try the cold caps to see if it's going to work. Yeah, I agree. And I tell you, really, women like you, Amory, and all the women I work with, they, they are so inspirational to me because they are. They're going through this totally difficult time. They don't know. They have to make these life-altering decisions, and they don't know which direction to go in. So yeah, if you can get, take some control, why not? And like you say, maybe it'll work. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, there've been. Very, I can count on one hand the times it hasn't worked. And that's usually because the woman doesn't tolerate the chemo well. So, you know, if the body rejects it, well, hair is also an organ. So, you know, if you're, if you can't tolerate it. In now that is very, very interesting because I have, I posted before I even met you, <laughs> I had, I, I, by met, I say e yeah. I had posted something that you were in you oh. like months ago. And, um, I put it up and I wanted to know who tried cold caps and immediately everybody was like, um, I have it, I did, it worked for me. And I had this one woman that went nuts. She was like, they don't work, they're full of it, da da da. And I ended up becoming friends with her and we were talking, chemo was horrible for her. Right. She was on the floor every single day with <laughs> vomiting, like just, she, it was bad. It was really, really bad. She took radiation like a champ, like it yeah. didn't even like affect her, but chemo knocked her out. Now that's not to say chemo doesn't knock everybody out because I think at some point chemo does knock you out, but I'm talking, this lady was sick, sick, right. sick. Right. And I want, I, now you say that, I wonder if that's, that, that makes why. sense. That is why, because it will think about it. I mean, why, you know, if you're, if your liver and your organs are going to reject this and you're going to be so sick, a lot of times they have to change the chemo. Exactly. Because, you know, you've had this terrible reaction. Well, your hair is the same thing. I mean, you know, people get I know. skin rashes, you know, why do you think you're going to have a skin rash and an extensive skin rash and keep your hair? It's all connected. So it's a very, very low percent percentage of people that I've seen experience that, but that's generally the reason. So, so and I just want to make everyone aware um, that's going to watch this, that you, you actually cap people. You come in and you will be their capper, which when I first read about it, I was like, well, your, your partner can do that. But <laughs> as I read about it, I was like, no, you know, they're stressed out enough dealing right. with you being ill that what you do is amazing. Oh, I mean, well, thank you. I mean, it is, it is very labor intensive. You know, we're on our feet all day. We're moving, we're hauling all this dry ice and these heavy caps and, yeah. you know, and it's a labor of love. So I'm not in any way complaining about that. I have a team of people cause I only have two hands, you know, so I have lots of hands out there. 
I've trained them. I train them extensively. I don't just show them once and say, go do it. You know, there's so much involved. There's a bedside manner. You know, there is the respect of being in a hospital where we don't work. You know, we have to work with other people. We don't want to get in the way. We want the whole thing. I mean, it's really a unique to me, a unique individual that can be a capper. Now that said, I mean, I know there are other teams out there too, and you know, that some are great and some aren't. And so anybody who sees this uh, in your area, if you know of cappers, one of the things I would ask is, have you ever given anyone frostbite or frost nip? Because that can happen. And it's not on my watch. It's never happened with my team, but I know that that has happened. And that's serious. Oh my gosh, that is so serious. And that's another reason why, you know, having your partner do it, it's such a huge responsibility. And we train people all the time, so that's fine. But be trained by a professional. Be trained by somebody. Don't, don't you know, there's a million YouTube videos. Don't just pick one, because who knows? Maybe that it's accurate, maybe it's not, you know? So um, go to somebody and get training if that's the road you want to go down. We do it all the time. So if someone is watching this and they live in Idaho and they want to have it done, do you have like you network enough that you can find someone for them? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I always say the starting point should be Penguin because I'm okay. not employed by Penguin. I'm an independent contractor. I work very closely. Obviously, you know, I know the owner. I know everybody at Penguin. Right. Great relationship. But I would always start there because they have all the information. So they know people who have done it in the area and maybe okay. some can do it for them. Um, but that said, I'm pretty well connected. So I never mind anybody shooting me an email. And Okay, great. And I actually was talking to a friend and she, she actually had a good point. And I forgot, I forgot all about this. So we just brought this up, but could you consult for a fee, somebody in like Idaho, like let's say they wanted to hire you, but you couldn't be there. Could you kind of talk them through it? I can and Skype with them. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes, yeah, Skype yeah. with them. Okay, great. I have that on my website, yeah. And and it's uh because it's just it's a very tactile process. Yes. So, yeah, you can't uh, you know, if, if you don't have that cap on tight, it's not going to do any good. And there are ways you have to fit it and mold it to the head because if the cap is one size fits all. So if you have a woman with a big head, that's great. She fills up the cap. It's a little more challenging with someone with a smaller head. There's right. all kinds of things. You want the ears to be protected. Some women's ears stick out. You know, you want to be able to have good contact everywhere on the head. So, well, um, you know, I know Penguin does rent them, and we we have elastigels which they can buy straight out. And we've had people that have bought them and then have donated them back to the hospital, which I oh, think is just nice. is awesome because they're not going to use them again, hopefully, right. or they've passed them down to a friend. Which and that's okay to do, right? You can you absolutely. Can, yeah, because with, with the Elastigel boots and mittens, another thing to remember is never to put it on bare skin. So I always, uh, you know, well, our cold cap patients always have socks on. Um, but, you know, even I just take a pair of the nursing gloves and put the gloves on and you just don't want it on bare skin. It's cold. Those get cold too. I know. Well, yeah. thank you for taking this Sunday and chilling with me. And thank you. So great. I can't wait to actually meet you and squeeze you and just, I, I feel like we just met. And for a reason, I really believe that I've I've thrown some people your way, and I feel like you're doing such a great thing for women out there that are losing their hair and freaking out about it. Yeah, well, thank you, and and I know you are just a huge inspiration to everybody because not only are you going through this on your own, you just connect people. You know, you have a big heart. I, I really believe that connecting people is so important because what might not work for me might work for you, and her story might help that person. And it, the, I really do believe that connecting people is something I really do love doing. So yeah. thank you for saying that. You're great. Well, I hope everyone has a really great Sunday. Yes, same here.